Tutorials on solubility, and we'll be looking at the rules which govern solubility, what dissolves and what doesn't. Uh, precipitate reactions, how you prepare a pure dry sa sample, and finally the diagnostic test that allows to test for certain chemicals. So firstly, a soluble substance is one which dissolves into a liquid, usually water. Salts are a good example of soluble substances, and generally in the exams it's all you'll be tested on. You'll know when something's insoluble because it'll appear as a solid or a kind of cloudy specks in a solution. Also, the name for the solution, uh, the liquid that in which the solute or the salt dissolves is called a solvent. And when a salt or a soluble substance dissolves in a solvent, we make a solute. So we would make a solution. So the solubility rules can be found in your booklets, in the C2 booklets, but here are the key things to remember. Anything, any compound which starts with sodium, potassium or ammonium, so remember SPA, are soluble. So for example, sodium chloride is soluble, um, potassium carbonate will be soluble, and so will ammonium fluoride, because they start with S, A, P. Secondly, anything which ends with nitrate is also soluble. So lead nitrate will dissolve in water, rubidium nitrate, and so on. Those are probably the two most important things to memorize. So if you don't remember anything, just remember those. There are also things which are insoluble, which you can read here. But to be honest, if I was to draw your attention to two very important insoluble substances, I would say silver chloride is one you should remember. Barium sulfate is one you should remember and calcium carbonate too, but that's actually not on this table. So that's solubility rules. Precipitate reactions are ones which, in which you react two soluble salt solutions to pr produce an insoluble salt in solution, or rather in a liquid. The best way to do this is actually to start off with the insoluble salt. So I said barium sulfate is important. I'll also explain why in a second. But let's start off with barium sulfate. Now, we know that's insoluble, but what two soluble salt solutions can be reacted to make barium sulfate. Well, let's just remember what I said in the previous slide. Anything beginning with sodium, potassium, ammonium is soluble. So we could use sodium sulfate, ammonium sulfate, or potassium sulfate. So I'm going for sodium sulfate. And what, do, what, uh, what soluble salt solution would contain barium? I did say anything which ends with nitrate is soluble. So I'm going to go for barium nitrate. Now this is a displacement reaction because what will happen is the barium will replace the sodium in the compound so you'll end up with barium sulfate and sodium nitrate so they sort of swap partners if you like. Okay, So the other compound on this side will be sodium nitrate but do remember that barium sulfate is the insoluble one. I picked this for a specific reason. Barium sulfate you also need to know because it's used in medical diagnostics. So if a patient complains of a gut abnormality, maybe they have a tumour growing in their gut, you can use barium sulfate to s diagnose this. So you'd feed the patient a barium meal, so they'd eat the barium meal. It contains barium sulfate. And as the uh, salt sort of enters the digestive system, it obviously doesn't dissolve, it's insoluble, and therefore it will just form a sort of cloudy precipitate in their digestive system, all the way down. And then what people can do is fire x-rays at it, and because it's insoluble, it's solid, it's like almost like a talcum powder, um, it reflects the x-rays back at us, so we can get an image of the gut. And therefore, let's say, for example, if there was a tumour growing in the gut like this, we'd see this sort of bulge inwards, and that would show that there's an abnormality in the gut. Also, barium sulphate is toxic. It can poison you, but it doesn't because it is insoluble. It doesn't dissolve into the blood. One more to practice. Let's say we want to make the insoluble white precipitate salt uh, silver chloride, so the insoluble salt silver chloride. Again, just do the same thing. So silver, well, we could uh, form a compound silver nitrate because all nitrates are soluble. Sodium chloride, well, anything starts with sodium is soluble. So they just switch dance part partners again because it's a displacement reaction and you end up with silver chloride and sodium nitrate, this one being insoluble. Okay. Remember, this is a displacement reaction where one compound replaces the other 
sorry, one chemical replaces another chemical in a compound. And here we are making a precipitate. Okay, that's precipitate reactions. How to prepare a pure dry salt sample. It comes up a lot in foundation, actually. Very easy. You just mix. So you react two correct soluble salt solutions. They have to be correct because they have to obviously um, produce an insoluble salt. So let's say silver nitrate reacting with sodium sulfate. Once the two are mixed, we end up with a clear solution with an insoluble salt or precipitate over here. We then funnel and filter, so we end up with the liquid part coming through here, and what's left behind in the filter paper is the insoluble salt. You then rinse through with water, and that means any sort of dissolvable impurities in that salt will dissolve into the water. The water will run through and wash it out into the uh, Petri dish below, meaning that we may get a purer sample of insoluble salt here. And finally, you just leave it to dry. And that's how you produce a pure dry salt sample. And finally, uh, diagnostic tests. So in an exam, they ask you to test how would you be able to detect sulfate ions, dissolve sulfate ions in solution, or chloride ions, or carbonate ions. So you should maybe be able to work this out now. So for sulfate ions, you use the soluble salt barium chloride, which will produce barium sulfate which is insoluble and therefore obviously that will prove sulfate ions are in there because we know only barium sulfate is insoluble in this context. For chloride ions we use the soluble salt silver nitrate because the silver, sorry it says sliver but it should be silver, silver will react with chloride to make, or chlorine to make silver chloride which is insoluble so if chloride ions are present suddenly you'll see a white precipitate just like this one both of these you'll see a white precipitate and with carbonate ions you'd use lime water which is also chemically known as uh, calcium hydroxide and you'll end up making calcium carbonate which is the same as limestone or chalk which is obviously insoluble it's a white precipitate as well the last thing is you can also test for certain um, dissolved ions using flame tests, but this time we're detecting for metal ions. So you need to know that sodium is, uh, well actually I always say orange, but the exam spec says yellow, which I disagree with personally, but what can you do? Uh, potassium will always burn a turn of flame lilac when you put a potassium containing salt solution in the flame it will burn lilac strontium will burn red uh, barium you can see is a yellowish color um, copper is blue green although it looks rather greenish here but blue green will do um, and selenium I've never seen come up but it looks like a green to me as well so in a for example an exam question where they say sodium chloride is dissolved in water obviously that would produce two types of ions. It produced sodium ions and um, chloride ions and it might ask you how could you test that the solution contains sodium ions and uh, chloride ions and the answer is easy. Chloride ions, well obviously you'd react it with silver nitrate to make silver chloride which is a white precipitate so that will prove chloride ions in there and sodium ions you could use a flame test and if it turns yellow you know it contains sodium. Done.